Welcome to Schofield Farm. I'm Carice and we live in Northern California, Zone 9B, and we are just outside the second sunniest city in the U.S. I was going to say country, but I realized you might not be watching in the U.S. So second sunniest city in the U.S. We're right outside it. And I am so excited because today I am going to share with you my fall planting plans. That is a tongue twister. Uh, okay. I just want to give a disclaimer before you watch this video that it is long. It is full of great info for fall gardening and the type of things I like to grow, but you might want to get yourself a cup of coffee, get yourself a notepad and a pencil because you might want to make some notes of things that you might not have thought about growing or reasons you may not have thought to grow a fall garden. I love to hear what other gardeners are growing and to get new ideas for varieties or things I didn't know might do well at a different time of year. So just want to tell you that before we get started. All right, let's dive right in. Today, I want to talk to you about why and how I grow a fall garden. One, you want to consider growing a fall garden because of pest pressure or temperature pressure. We live in a very hot place. We have a lot of aphids, a lot of spider mites, but as soon as things start to even get reasonable temp wise, sometimes the veggies can actually do better. Two, you might want to consider growing a fall garden because there's certain types of veggies that do not do well in heat. Those are more cool weather loving veggies like lettuce, like broccoli, like even carrots. Three, there's certain things you should sow in the fall to overwinter, such as garlic and onions and certain flowers. Four, if you can extend your growing season with succession sowing, maybe sowing another round of squash, maybe sowing another round of bush beans, or even some of your tomato suffering, going ahead and having some young ones come up that won't be suffering from disease or pests. Those are four reasons I can think of off the top of my head. Let me share with you some of what we do. I can't wait to share with you the different things I am planning on sowing very, very soon. I usually start my fall garden seeds inside in the month of August. And the way we do fall gardens around here in our super hot climate is different than some people do. So I'm going to share with you what my plans are that I've written down and kind of what I've done the last several years to give you an idea of what you could grow if you're in our area or give you ideas of maybe what you'd want to plant in your own fall garden if you're in an area that you can start seeds now. Real quick, I wanted to show you, these are more sweet potato slips. Isn't that wild? I still have sweet potatoes in a cup of water and I pull off the little slips and I root them. And I'm trying to decide, we actually have a very long growing season, so I could plant these out, but I could also make a house plant with them because they're beautiful house plants. So I don't know. Right now they're in this glass of water and I just wanted to share my silly quirkiness with you because I absolutely love how simple they are to make. Okay, put this aside. We're going to talk fall garden planning. Now some of you might think, why would I start a fall garden when my summer garden is just starting to produce? And here are the reasons why you might consider it. One, you might have a lot of pest pressure in your summer garden. And so it's a simple method of succession sowing to take some of the plants that you're already growing and maybe give them a second round or possibility. So you might wanna give a plant that didn't do well because of pest pressure, or for us, it might even be because of heat. You might wanna give it a second shot if your growing season is long enough. Now, something I am going to do that way is my pickling cucumbers. My pickling cucumbers are producing just fine, but we have a longer growing season and I figure they're probably going to start slowing down or have pest pressure at some point. So I'm thinking of direct sowing a couple seeds actually next to the current plants. And then when these seeds start growing up, I will cut the current plants at the soil line to let these take over and be a fresh plant. 
Another one I have to do that way is zucchini and summer squash. We don't have the type of pest pressure that some people do with lots of squash bugs, thankfully. Our pests are more lots and lots of aphids, spider mites, thrive, things that thrive in dry, hot climates. However, I have found these start to slow in production as the time goes on. So I still have time to direct sow a couple seeds. And as soon as these start coming up, I can cut out the old plants and let these take over as fresh, young, vigorous plants. Another veggie that we have recently direct sowed like this are beans. I had peas growing all through the center of one bed and in a couple pots as those started to succumb to the heat and to the pests, specifically spider mites, I cut them out, but I'd already planted next to them different types of vining peas, different types of vining beans, pole beans. So those are already coming up. They're just about to vine. They're not producing fruit yet, but they're going to take the place. Now for us, we have tremendous aphid pressure on our beans in the peak of the summer. So I had written notes to purposely plant my pole beans a little bit later to hopefully avoid the onslaught of aphids. So far, it worked for me last year. I'm hoping that it works this year as well. I also planted a bunch of bush beans among my squash with the same idea. I planted them about a month ago and they're just coming up. They're just starting to have some nice foliage. They haven't set flowers yet, but they are kind of a succession sown later summer and early fall producing harvest. Next, I wanna share with you some stuff that I plant for what I would call my cool season garden. Fall here is not cool. I always say, well, it should be cool at least by Halloween. We've had Halloween rained out before and we don't celebrate Halloween, but so many around here do that I always think, okay, we'll at least get rain by Halloween because we're not only waiting for cooler weather, we often don't have any rain in the summer or the fall until very late October, sometimes not until early November, depending on the year. So I'm always doing that little dance with start seeds inside sometime in August, but waiting for the right moment to transplant our small plants out so that they're avoiding the brutal heat if there's something very sensitive like brassicas or so that we're getting things in before there's too much of a drop of temperature as well. That was a lot to share with you. Um, that was just talking about the things that we're giving kind of a succession planting for late summer that maybe didn't do very well the first time. Now, another reason you would want to consider planting a fall garden is you may have certain crops that grow better in like cooler weather like we do. We have a very hot climate. We often do not get rain till the very end of October. And I tell myself as I am craving all things pumpkin and all things fall flavored that at least after Halloween, at least then I can enjoy a pumpkin spice latte and not a hundred degree weather. <laughs> but we grow all of those cooler weather loving vegetables in what I would call our fall winter garden. We start the seeds inside often sometime in August, some of them earlier August that we could maybe transplant earlier. And some of them we don't start till like later August, maybe even early September, because we're always doing the little dance of when can we plant them out that they won't succumb to really, really hot weather and maybe bolt early, or they won't be established enough before the shorter length days and the colder nights start setting in. So it's a little bit of a juggling act, but I know there's others of you who live in climates like ours that maybe you can't grow things like brassicas very successfully in the summer because it's just too hot. It's just too brutal. Maybe lettuce goes straight to bolting in the summer where you are, just like where we are. And so lettuce is one that we found does best over the fall, winter, and spring. 
I remember a story of the very first time I grew lettuce. And I think this was about nine years ago, maybe eight years ago, but something like that. Um, I remember which house I was living in is how I guessed the time. I went to a farmer's market and they had this nice little pot of like a masculine mix of different lettuces and they told me it was cut and come again and, and that it would do well. And I remember handing over my $10 bill and taking it home and I was so excited. At that point, I was in a place that I was container gardening and had two four by four square foot garden beds in the only location that even got any amount of direct sunlight. We did not have a situation that had full sun anywhere on that property because of huge, gorgeous trees. Well, it was like July, the peak of summer heat, and those lettuces bolted immediately. And I thought, I am so bad at growing lettuce. No guys, I was growing lettuce at the wrong time. Lettuce does so good here in the cooler weather. So we started inside in August, September, even October, and then I slowly transplanted out so that we have abundant lettuce all winter long, all spring long. I do lots of succession sowing with it, and I have experimented growing lettuce in the shade of other plants in the summer. And even when I get it to not bolt, it is never as big, as crisp, and as sweet as when we grow it in cooler weather. So if you live somewhere with a hotter climate like we do, that might be the key to you growing lettuce that you may not have tried. Because I know a lot of us think the problem is with the gardener, but often the problem with growing things is we just don't know the proper time for our own climate and the proper nutritional needs or maybe mulching needs or water needs of that plant. It's not that we couldn't grow it. Everybody can grow things if they have the right tools to do it. Now, here are the things that we are going to sow for our cooler weather garden. And as I said, it's not cooler weather in September here. It's not raining even in October most of the time, but we will slowly start to transplant out things and see how they do. Try to play the dance of getting them established before we have the shorter length days because plants need a certain amount of sunlight to really thrive too. So that's always kind of the dance we play is balance the temps, balance the sunshine, balance the water needs. You know what I mean? But I really, really love our cool season garden because it is less work. There is often and not always less pest pressure. We do still get aphids sometimes in the winter here, guys, because we have weird winters. We will have 80 degree days sometimes in January. It isn't every day, but it happens often enough that our plants will get used to maybe some cooler weather and then they'll decide to bolt and it never actually have pests like aphids go dormant. So it's tricky. It's tricky, but it's always kind of a fun puzzle to figure out and learn. And so I'm always up for the challenge. All right, let me share with you which veggies are on my list right here to grow. Okay. One thing I mentioned is I always miss the window for fall sown flowers. I know certain flowers do better if you sow them in the fall and they're able to overwinter and establish before the springtime hollyhocks. Hollyhocks are one of those. I have sown hollyhocks in the spring, but often they didn't get to get through that cold spell they need to actually bloom. So I'm planning on spreading some more hollyhock seeds over the fall so that we will have abundant blossoms of hollyhocks in all the places I've wanted them and we'll get blooms in the spring instead of waiting basically two springs for those to bloom. That's other flowers like that here. It is just so hot, so, so hot in the direct sunlight. So I had the idea of planting out more nasturtium in the fall. I am trying to decide if I want to direct sow or start indoors. I might try both ways. And a lot of places that have the type of temps that we do can have these over winter and sometimes even bloom better in the winter. So that is one of my experiences this year because I've always done them in the summertime. And then unless they have 
a partially shaded area, they end up just frying in the sunshine and not getting, you know, the amount of blooms I was hoping that they would get. All right, another one like that, I was thinking, oh guys, onions. We save our own onion seed from letting some of our onions bolt every year, bloom, the blossom head dry out, and then we harvest the seeds. What I like to do, I like to take like an old lettuce container or an old strawberry container, a berry container, one of those clear plastic clamshells that have the lid and have holes on the bottom already. And I like to put some seed starter mix and maybe put a little bit of like worm castings in there to give a little nutrition. And then I just put a lot of onion seeds. I do the same for lettuce. I do lots of lettuce seeds. And then as they mature, I will separate them out. And the onions, I don't even like up pot them to something bigger. I let them grow up, kind of looks like wheatgrass. And then when I plant them, I actually direct plant them out into the garden by just wiggling their roots and putting like each blade of grass in at the spacing that they need. And that has worked really well for me. It's a very easy way to start onions and to start a lot of them. The first time I grew onions, I bought the little sets that were like little teeny onions that you plant out. But a friend of mine said, you know what? The seeds are so cheap. It's like a pack of seeds is 300 onion seeds for $3. So it's like a penny a seed. And you can grow so many onions. If you have some not do well, it's not a big loss for what your investment was. Well, I found even a cheaper way to do it was to save our own onion seeds. And those are different onions that have acclimated to our particular area. So often they do better from the seeds that we have saved than even the ones that we bought from really great companies. So that's one thing we are for sure growing in our cool garden. Garlic is another one. Let me show you my braid of garlic that I am saving for planting in the fall. And garlic and onion, I usually transplant out. There's like a little saying I learned, so on Halloween, harvest on Father's Day. We don't do it exactly to that. We usually will plant out garlic and onions sometime the last week of October, first week of November, and sometime in June, depending on the weather that year, we will do our harvest as they appear ready. I do have a whole video up that you can look in my past videos of how to know if your garlic is ready to harvest. And so we, we go by what the plant is saying, if it looks ready to harvest versus a day, but having that little saying in my mind gives me kind of a, a rule of thumb to know, okay, sometime in June, it's gonna be ready. Let me show you my braid that I am saving and setting aside for planting my garlic. Here is the braid of my biggest heads that I set aside for my planting this year. I am very, very excited. That is soft neck. And I have a colander of hard neck that I have set aside as well. I try to plant the biggest cloves because a bigger clove planted means a bigger head harvested usually. So that is set aside for later. That is actually planting in the fall. I'm talking about things I'm gonna plant out a little earlier as well, but I wanted to mention those two because those are key cool season veggies, root veggies for our garden. We absolutely love homegrown garlic and homegrown onions, and they're very easy. If you live in a place like we do where we do get good rain, usually in the winter, it's very low maintenance to grow them and they they taste really good they're really great oh guys i am just bombarding you with info i hope you have a pen and paper that you can write down some ideas of things to grow if it's too much info you can always go back and look you can save my video you can reference it later and um as always i would appreciate you liking my video if any of this info is helpful commenting whether it's a question that you ask or you want to share something that you're going to grow in the fall or in the winter i would just love to interact with you more on this channel okay let me get back to the list of things that i've written down because it is a lot a lot of stuff that i'm planning on growing but that's one of the beautiful things about living somewhere where I can grow food year round is that I can actually experiment with a lot of different things and I'm not just limited to the traditional 
basil, tomatoes, and peppers that the Summer Garden offers in such beautiful bounty. Okay, so I love to grow kale. Where is my kale box? I have a kale box around here. I laid out so many boxes of the different things I grow so I could share them with you. <laughs> okay, here's my kale box. I have lots of fun kale. I actually got a new kale this year called Japanese flowering kale. It's more ornamental, but I think it might be fun to grow. Uh, I have fun frilly kales. I have dino kale. I really, really love red Russian kales. I always include red Russian kales. Uh, last year was the first year I included Siberian kale. Kale is one of my favorite greens and I always include it in my cooler weather garden. I also usually plant kale in the spring and you know, it does all right here in the summer. I try to do it in where it's gonna get partially shaded, but kale is just so sweet in, this, in the winter that it's one to definitely grow in the fall or if you can grow winter gardens. Kale is a great one. Chard is another one that is on my list of must grows. Chard is the veggie, the green that I use in most of my green smoothies. So this is also a favorite with my chickens. And so I always share uh, chard little treats from the garden with them when I'm there. They, they know my sound. They come running to the fence and they're waiting when I'm gardening for me to share a little bit of chard with them. So I always plant out more chard and I've got really old chard plants as well, but it does really well here over all different times of year, honestly. So those are two that are priority for me. Another thing I'm going to plant out is I'm planting more celery. This is a celery that I grew this year for the first time. I grew celery about seven years ago, uh, a start that a neighbor in a different neighborhood gave me. I wasn't too impressed. It was okay. It was mostly leaves and I used it for bone broth, but this one has done really, really well in the shade of my tomato plants. It's called Celery de Alene. Oh, I thought it was Aline before. Maybe it is Aline. Anyway, that's how you say it. That's how you read it. I got it from Baker's Creek and it did well for me over the summer. And I have talked to a lot of local gardeners and they say it does even better in our area in the fall and winter. So I will do another planting of this. I just got some pink celery too. So I might try a few of these. I love color in the garden. I love colorful vegetables and colorful fruit. And I am excited to see how this is. I think my girls would be really excited to see some pink celery coming up. So that's something that I'm planning on for sure, including uh what else do i got here oh we had this idea of growing we usually grow some peas over the winter but we were going to do a fall winter rotation in our potato bed where we planted our whole potato bed with peas and maybe some lettuce as well last year our rotation in that bed were brassicas i had collards i had cabbage Mitsuna, I'm trying to think of what other, uh, yeah, mostly different cabbages, Mitsuna, collards. And I like to kind of experiment with giving beds, maybe a type of veggie family that takes completely different nutrients from the soil and puts different, you know, stuff back into the soil than what was previously grown there. And it's just something I'm learning and I'm not like amazing at, but I thought it would be really nice since peas are known as nitrogen fixers and they're actually really, really good for overwintering. Some people grow peas just as a cover crop to sow a ton of peas. And my kids love, 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 love snap peas and snow peas. So that's right now the main plan. Sometimes I draw out a nice little map of my garden with each bed on a grid to decide where to put things each season. And I probably will do that as well. I haven't done it yet, but the girls and I were talking and we think there should be peas in that specific area. So that's a thought right now. I have several different kinds. I have giant snow peas. I have sugar snap peas. I have these green beauty peas. So we're going to try something and maybe even mix and match and do something fun there. So peas are, yes, they're a must for us. As soon as we harvest some of the last potatoes, I think is when we're going to put them in there. 
and I'm probably gonna direct sew them. Some people start those indoors too, but I'm probably gonna direct sew them. That's what I usually do. We are for sure going to grow lettuce. Now I need to start this in those little clamshells I was talking about. Mayan Jaguar is a fun one. We love butter crunch. We'll do a musclin mix. This is a new one to me. It's called Ice Queen. I think we'll probably try this one over the winter. I basically grow so much lettuce in the winter. I think it is one of the best, would you call it cash crops for the home gardener to do because lettuce, often we'll hear about contamination on lettuce in the news. Also, lettuce has gone really up in inflation. There are places here that we have found lettuce for three, four, five dollars. And you know, that's organic lettuce or sometimes not even organic lettuce. And lettuce, there's so many in a, sea, in a seed pack. Like I'm pretty sure this one says, which one? This one says minimum 150 seeds, minimum. I think this is a $3 pack. So that's two cents a seed, two cents a potential head for lettuce. Even if you were paying $2, let's be real conservative. Two bucks for a head of lettuce at the store, you paid two cents for a head of lettuce. That is like a hundred percent savings. So I think as like a cash crop for your home gardener who's trying to feed their family, lettuce is a great way to go. And I know that having salads in the winter is kind of against the traditional food, but our family eats seasonally. We've learned to do that a long time ago. So we are already more used to having more salads when lettuce is doing well in the garden. Okay, another thing I love to grow is all of the brassicas. I love broccoli. We've had hit or miss with the brassicas, honestly. Sometimes our brassicas do really, really well. Sometimes we have those random hot days and they bolt. And they bolt when it's, you know, it's not even that hot, but because it's 80 degrees and it had been cooler, they think, oh, time to go to seed. So, but I'm always doing it because I really love a homegrown head of broccoli. There is something just, oh, and we love sauerkraut. We love Chinese chicken salads. We've made our own kimchi. We do a really cool, I think it's a Ugandan dish. A friend of mine taught me years and years ago. It's super simple. You do curried cabbage and you like caramelize it on the stove and it's just Oh, so amazing. So we love cabbage. We love brassicas. We love cauliflower. We love broccoli. This is a bro broccoli rob. I have not tried yet. I'm hoping to grow this this year. The broccoli that did best for me in our area last year was solstice broccoli from Redwood Seeds. Um, I've also heard that hybrid broccolis do well in our area because they're less likely to bolt. So I might buy a hybrid as well just to see if that helps with the bolting issue with broccoli. Okay, so broccoli. I usually grow like five, six, seven varieties of broccoli because guys, I am talking really fast and I am terrible at picking just one favorite of anything. It's true. It is an issue. Okay, so cauliflower. My favorite cauliflower to grow is purple. Why? Because it's purple. It looks like a beautiful flower. So I grow this cauliflower. It is called Purple of Sicily. And we love this, whether it's a big head or a small head we get. It is so pretty and we always do a photo op with it. It is a very fun one. I also have Snowball Cauliflower. And I also have, let's see, this is called Dragesh 41. And those do pretty well for me. I had a really terrible cauliflower year this last year, and I think it's mostly because we had so much snow and we don't really get snow, guys. I mean, I know people say they don't get snow, but we really don't really get snow. Okay, one brassica that we love around here is cabbage, and really the winter time is the only time that cabbage does okay here. It basically, we plant it in the fall, it overwinters, and if everything goes right, we have a harvest early spring. As I said, some years the weather's a little wacky, so it doesn't always work, but these are the cabbages that I have been growing in my garden the last couple years. If you have a favorite variety, 
please add it below, especially if it's slow to bolt. I want to find a new to me variety that's slow to bolt, but these are the ones I've been growing. I've been growing Copenhagen market cabbage. I grow all seasons cabbage. I grow red acre cabbage. This is the one that has the little purple cabbages. They're quite pretty. Golden acre cabbage. Oh, we love this. Nizaki Chinese cabbage. I really do like to make kimchi, but my kids love Chinese chicken salad so much that the last two years, that is what all of this that we have grown has gone to, is Chinese chicken salad. This is actually the only cabbage of mine that did really well last year with our weird weather. It still gave us a good harvest, and we did have two really giant, huge Chinese chicken salads for our family of nine. This is a new to me one that was a free seed pack. Uh, it's called Miro de Toscana. It is a leaf cabbage. We use this in like stir fries. That's how we used it growing it. If you have a cabbage you love, please tell me below because I'm always looking for new varieties. As you can tell, I love variety. Okay, so other things that for me seem to grow well, um, calendula. Calendula is a great time to plant it in the fall. In our climate, in 9B, it actually often flowers nicer all winter long. It is very, very susceptible to spider mites in the summer. They seem to just go away and leave it alone in the winter. A lot of our calendula will live year round here but it also likes to put off little babies as its seed heads fall if you aren't deadheading it enough. So this one, Strawberry Blonde, this is one of my very favorites. It ends up with like, I don't know, you can't tell on the envelope, but it ends up with like a striped kind of bottom of its, its petal. It is just beautiful. So I will probably plant more calendula. I want to use it as a companion plant at some point with my fruit trees. That is a goal of mine to put chives under my fruit trees, to put calendula, some different really beneficial herbs. And I just keep not getting it done. So maybe this will be the fall. I will plant more German chamomile because it's my favorite tea. It usually basically fries for me by the end of the summer but a lot of people in my area have told me they grow it and have it flower in the winter. So I think if I start it early enough in the fall, it will be able to survive and not just completely, you know, burn out by the hot summer. I sell a lot of herb starts in the fall to other local gardeners because in our area, the fall is a good time to start a lot of herbs. I would not start basil unless you know, you're just knowing it's gonna die to frost, but things like thyme, oregano, rosemary, chamomile, calendula, all of those will live through the winter in our area. So those are really good ones. Oh, also, I have found sowing alyssum in the winter. Well, sowing in the fall to grow in the winter, also it is really good and does well with a little bit cooler weather and it is frost hardy to an extent. And as I said, the nasturtium, I guess, technically is edible. This I'm gonna try growing over the fall and winter as well. We are going next to direct sowing, okay. I have never done well with spinach. It doesn't matter how many times I start spinach and what time of year I transplant it, my spinach bolts. My spinach will bolt in 50 degrees. I don't know guys, spinach and me, we are not friends. So someone told me maybe it's because I'm starting it inside. Maybe if I direct sow spinach, it would do better. We have a lot of pill bugs and centipedes in our garden. I, I don't mind them in some ways because they are really good at breaking down organic matter and the carbons, 
but they also will eat tender young plants. And that's been a problem for me a lot with a lot of my transplants that are young and tender, but I might try to direct sow spinach this year and let you guys know on my channel how it's going. And you can see if I finally overcome being a bad spinach farmer, that would be pretty awesome because we love spinach and things like lasagna. And I always have to substitute chard for my spinach because chard does great and spinach, not so great. So that is something I'm gonna try to do. I'm also going to direct sow mesclun lettuce mix. And it's obviously not just lettuce, it has kales, arugulas, mitsunas, it has all sorts of things. And you cut it as like those baby greens. You know those tubs you buy at places like Costco and Walmart grocery that are big, that are the mixed greens. That's basically the Mitsuna salad mix. So I'm gonna direct sow that so that I have, you know, a sprinkling of the different kinds of baby greens. And I think that will probably do okay direct sowed. Also, I'm going to direct sow turnips again. I did turnips last year. My turnips did pretty poor, but I think that was my fault. I think it's because I fed my beds with um, compost that wasn't quite ready that we had done ourselves, So I'm gonna give them another go because turnips could be a great substitute for potatoes. We don't have a great cold storage option for potatoes. So we usually, you know, eat them till they run out. I would love to keep eating them in the garden and not have to supplement as much from the grocery store. So if I could have turnips to harvest that we could roast, and boil and mash and you know all the ways that you eat potatoes that would be really cool so we're going to try that again i do also direct sow a lot of radishes this is a purple plum radish that's a fun one that i grow this is a japanese daikon radish that has done so so for me sometimes it does great sometimes not as great this is a fun radish i caught i don't even remember when I got this one, I think I got it at a local nursery. It is, oh no, it's not, it's in my gardener. It's a sparkler white tip. This one's pretty, it's like the pinkish red and white. And I love radishes. And even if radishes bolt for me, I really like the little seed pods. I like having something flower in the garden all the time because we do keep bees. So I don't even mind that much if things do bolt because then our bees have something to visit. <laughs> even during the traditional dearth times where dearth just means there's not as much pollen and nectar available to bees. So I don't have to supplement with sugar water as much with my bees if I make sure there's always something blooming on our property, always. And that's kind of a personal goal for me to have something in bloom all season, or that doesn't make sense. Something in bloom in every season. That is a personal goal, whether it's flowers or you know bolted veggies or flowering trees or herbs or or plants shrubs i want something blooming all the time what else do i direct so i do direct so carrots i would not take my advice for carrots because i am a dismal carrot farmer some years i get like pretty nice harvest and some years i get three like this year three i think i direct sowed 300 seeds this is a fun one I hope would do well because look at it. It's like so dark purple, it's almost black. I wanna try that this year. I love rainbow blends just because when the kids harvest it, it's fun to guess and see what color comes up. I like things like the little sweet ones. This is just a random one. Uh, here's a tender sweet. The, the Danvers usually do pretty good, but um, as I said, this was a really bad year for me with my root veggies. I attribute it to the fact that I amended with not quite finished compost. That is my hypothesis and we will see this year because I'm not gonna make the same mistake and we'll see if they do better for me. I love beets. What I do with beets, I grow beets. I try to grow beets all year long. I try to sow them in the spring. I sow them in the fall. I love, love, love beets. I don't always have a good success with beets. Beets do not direct so good for me. I start beets inside. So Charles Dowding, he sows certain things. I think he does it with radishes, but he does it with leeks, I know. He does it with onions. He does it with beets. Maybe radishes where he sows in little cell trays. 
like a couple seeds and then he transplants that whole thing out into the garden and they kind of push against each other and they they are like companions to each other for growing i like that with beets because when i direct sow beets i feel like the natural decomposers like pill bugs roly polies are what pill bugs are and centipedes end up eating them so or maybe birds are eating my seeds too that could be possible but when i do them inside i transplant them i might not get as big of beets but i mean honestly i'm competing with like getting no beets so i like to do it that way beets naturally will grow two plants from most of the seeds they have like a compound seed so it's already it just means like you plant it out if two come up then i don't thin it I don't thin it. I know that like you can thin carrots and that kind of stuff, radishes, but I try to actually space my radishes, but I don't thin the beets. I just try to give them room in between each little grouping. I love gold beets. I like the, I like the Chiogia beets. Let me show you. A lot of you probably are familiar with them, but they look like a, a cool little bullseye when you cut them open and you slice them. And I love the Detroit red beets. I love Detroit Red. I'm actually out of these, so I need to order more beets very soon so I can do my fall planting of beets. That is something that's a must in my fall winter garden are beets. Let's go to greens. I know this is so much stuff. I hope you're taking notes because I really do grow a huge, huge variety of stuff in the cooler season. I like to call it even maybe more accurate than saying fall. Okay. Let's go. Oh, I didn't say this earlier. With the herbs, I like to grow cilantro and dill through the winter. Cilantro especially does so well here during the cooler time and it bolts immediately in the heat. So I love to have cilantro all winter long. I know that doesn't line up well with salsa. Sometimes we have some growing during our, our late harvest of tomatoes, even the ones we have ripening on the counter. Sometimes it will line up a little bit with salsa, but we put it in like salads. We put it in all sorts of stuff. I do cilantro smoothies and stuff. We really like cilantro, but that is one we do do in the cooler weather. And dill also does well here in cooler weather. I'm gonna try this Japanese parsley. I think this year, oh, parsley is one that does well in the cooler weather. So we will probably start some parsley. What else? Oh, this is a very fun parsley I grew this year. I like it a lot. Very pretty, very tasty. It is Giant of Italy parsley. That is a fun one. I'm looking at my notes. I'm going to talk next about some different greens. Oh wait, real fast. Chives. Our chives live year round. Well, kind of true. They die back a little bit when it's really cold, but then they'll come back with vigor. But they do last a really long time and come back really early. They are the very first thing to bloom in our garden besides like the alyssum and the calendula that were blooming all winter long. The first kind of spring thing to bloom with beautiful purple flowers are the chives. The bees love them. So I'm always growing chives. I'm almost growing them more for the bees than even myself because I cannot keep up with how many chives we have to eat. I'm always trying to sell them, give them away, um, <laughs> everything. But I do want to have chives under my fruit trees. They are a great companion plant for fruit trees. So that is a goal of mine. Chives are a good herb for the cooler season garden. Even if they die back, they should come back because they are perennial I don't know to which zone, but if you're in zone nine, at least I can speak for zone nine, they should come back for you. Greens that I love. I love greens. I have a green smoothie almost every single day. Now I already told you chard is my go-to for green smoothies. I love kale in my green smoothies. We make this fabulous kale salad with very simple. It's lemon, either Parmesan or Romano grated cheese salt, pepper, and olive oil. It's super simple. We cut the, the kale very small, toss it, and I've even had some of my kids ask for it to go with their birthday dinner. I mean, that's how good this salad is. It's so simple, but we love kale. I, in the last three years, have grown to love Japanese red mustard. I didn't know how much I'd love it. I One thing I love about Baker's Creek is they give these free seed packets, and that's how I first tried 
Japanese red mustard. Now it is a staple in my garden all year long. I grow it in the fall and winter. I plant again in the spring. It does end up bolting in the summer, but as long as I can, I have mustard. We put it in stir fries. We put it on sandwiches. We, if we harvest it young, we put it in salads. I just really like this stuff and it's so beautiful. I mean, look at that color. This doesn't even really show how beautiful this is in the garden. It's such a contrast. So we grow mustards. I grew collards last year for the first year. I would like to try them again. They did so-so, but they should be huge and mine were not huge. We grow tatsoi and I've only done tatsoi one year, but it is so beautiful and I love all the different kinds of like bok choy type of um, tender Asian greens. Isn't that a pretty, pretty plant? It's beautiful. So we're gonna tap soy again. Mitsuna is a fun one to add to salads or you could add it to like pizzas like you can arugula. This is a newer one to us. It didn't do that well last year. We're gonna try it again. It's called Komatsuna and it is an Asian green. Uh, arugula, arugula hates our summers. It gets terribly bitter. It is like inedible. And I will eat pretty much anything from the garden, even when it's a little bit bitter. Arugula is inedible, but it's wonderful in the winter. So I'm going to make sure to plant some arugula. And that's like most of my greens. One thing I forgot to tell you guys is I always plant some bunching onions. And if for some reason I forget to plant the bunching onions, because you can just harvest those green onions all winter long, all fall long, while you're waiting for your, your other onions to bulb up, is sometimes if I have extra onion starts and I don't have room for them, I'll plant my onion starts like bunching onions. I'll plant like a section really close together and I'll just harvest those like bunching onions. And that's a fun way to always have fresh onion year round if you are in a climate that can have onion greens growing. I know some of you are like in Northern climates that are like zone three, zone four. I don't know, you might be able to do it covered. You guys would have to tell me in the comments how that works for you with onions. But for us, onions are beautiful in the garden in the winter. They've got that little bit of green life going up. And so treating some of them like bunching onions or purposely getting bunching onions gives you the onion flavor in some way all year long. Leeks, I almost forgot. That's the last thing I need to mention. I grow leeks. Leeks can be a perennial. For me, they end up a perennial. I planted them twice a year, fall and spring, but if you forget to harvest them, which I have, they will actually kind of make clove bulbs like garlic. I've harvested those before, but some of those I forget, they actually put up new leeks and then they end up coming up for the next season. So I have a bed that has a lot of leeks and I am anticipating having leeks in the fall and winter as well, in the early spring. They are very, very fun to have that kind of allium in the garden for when, you know, maybe I don't have garlic or onions quite ready. I might have leeks ready. There you go, guys. Those are my plans for fall sowing. As I said, for me, I start in August. So I will start sowing some of these different things inside, in seed trays, in cups, in little clamshells, all the different kinds of ways very, very soon. I'm realizing as I share with you, there's a couple things I need to order, like some more beets, but I am actually getting excited. Just talking about the fall and winter garden makes me look forward to those types of veggies that don't like our heat as well. Yeah, it'll be good. And I will love to show you in future videos how I personally transplant and I'll tuck things underneath maybe a summer type heat loving veggie that's finishing up. And then I will cut that one out as we hit frost and let the little one that was underneath like some sort of brassica grow up and take that space. I do a lot of creative planting to maximize our limited room. We do have a decent sized property, but we only have so many raised beds in areas that are actually ready for planting and growing food and irrigated well. So I will show you how exactly I do that as we get to that time of year. 
And I am really glad to talk about this with you. I'd love to hear what you're growing in fall or cool weather gardening time for you. And yeah, if any of this was helpful or you know someone who has thought about doing fall gardening and or maybe hadn't ever considered fall gardening, you could share our video with them. I would love that. And if you don't subscribe and this kind of content is something that you're interested in and you made it all the way to the end of this really long video, I would love if you would hit the subscribe button and you will hear about future videos that we do that hopefully are things that would be helpful and beneficial to just see another gardener in a different area doing. And yeah, bless you guys. Happy gardening. I will see you very soon.